Hi, we're here today with Skarinci and Hollenbach attorney Joel Glucksman. Joel chairs the firm's bankruptcy and creditors' rights department. Uh, Joel, so what do you have for us today? Hi, Nicole. Um, today, I thought we'd talk about a very hot topic in the economy these days, student loan debt and personal bankruptcy. Nicole, did you know that one in five households has a person who has student loan debt and that the total debt in the country is over a trillion dollars. Wow, no. Oh, it's, it's, it's an amazing amount of money. In fact, over two-thirds of graduates leave school with some student loan debt, and the average amount is $25,000, wow. which is just an incredible amount of money. These are kids who can't buy houses, who live at home with their parents, who drive secondhand cars, and can't even start to build independent lives because of the overhang of debt that they have. That's what the bankruptcy code is supposed to do, right? It's supposed to help people who are being crushed by their debts? Well, you're right and you're wrong. Bankruptcy is a right in the United States that goes all the way back to the Constitution. Uh, when the Constitution was drafted, it empowered Congress to make laws respecting bankruptcy. And for over 200 years, Congress never mentioned student loan debt. Then, in 1978, Congress first began to restrict the ability of students to discharge student loan debt. They declared that if loans had been acquired within the past five years, they could only be discharged if the student could show undue hardship. That was a term of art. Then they began limiting it further. First, they did away with the five years and made it all student loan debt. And then they applied it not just to government-issued or government-backed student loans, they applied it to all loans, even those from private sources. Okay, so I have a question for you. What is undue hardship? The problem with the undue hardship test is that it's not easy to meet. Um, it's not very simple. It can be quite complex and burdensome for the student. You have to show, first of all, that you can't maintain even a minimal level of lifestyle if you have to pay off your student loans. Then you have to establish that this inability is going to last for the entire period almost of your student loan repayment schedule. And finally, you have to show that you made a good faith effort to repay your loans. Okay, so another question for you. What does good faith mean? Good question, because that's <laughs> the toughest part of the test to meet. Uh, you have to show, basically, that you didn't willfully or negligently cause your situation. For example, you didn't deliberately walk away from a good paying job just so that you could stiff the government on your student <laughs> loans. You have to show basically that your inability to cover your loans results from factors beyond your control. You have to show that you tried to get a good job, that you tried to make good money, that you tried to limit your living expenses and were unsuccessful. And finally, you have to show that you tried to cooperate with your lender, that you tried to um, establish a payment program, that you tried to get a little bit of relief. All of this is your burden to prove if you're trying to get rid of your student loan debt. Wow. It's kind of harsh, I think. It's very harsh. So what should you do if you're in this position? Well, realistically, you need to talk to a lawyer who specializes in consumer bankruptcy. You need to see what he or she can tell you. But above all, you need to be realistic because, frankly, until Congress changes the law, it's going to be very difficult to get relief from your student loan debt. Sounds that way. Thank you so much, Joel. You're I've welcome. had a great time. Thank you. For more information on Joel Glucksman, please visit him at his blog at www.NewJerseyBankruptcyNow.com.